Faith has a great question. I deal with this too, which is how do we use the combination of a to-do list and a calendar when we have things that aren't necessarily deadline, but we don't want to forget about it. So like, for example, let's say I have some idea to improve my client services. I don't want it to just go into a black hole. Uh, first of all, uh, that idea needs to be put into a category called, you know, service improvement. I literally have a category called service improvement. And then I have a slot in my calendar that is every week. I spend at least half hour on service improvement. So when the time comes, I go to my to-do list, I open up service improvement, and then I look at what I want to do. Now, there's so many things there. There's so many ideas there now. There's dozens, if not hundreds of ideas. So um, that's why I think Faith and I and others like, well, let me just schedule this sooner because I don't want to forget about it. I want it to come up so I don't forget. So what I recommend, and this is, I'm still learning this too, which is instead of putting a to-do date, putting a due date, I simply categorize it as priority one or priority two in that category without a due date. So Faith, let me know if that's helpful. So whatever idea you have, if it's not actually, if there's no penalty that you have to deliver to a client or deliver to you know, somebody, but it's just your own like sense of urgency. Oh, I really want to do this soon. You put it as a high priority in that category. You put it high priority, P1 or high pr priority one or whatever in the cat, no due date because otherwise things start cluttering up. And then you make sure your calendar has a calendar item for that category. It's very important. What, what this does is that it will inspire you and incentivize you, motivate you to make sure you do that category, make sure you don't bump, you don't bump that category because you have a sense that, ooh, there are some important things in that category. Do you see what I mean? So Faith, is that, is that helpful? Let me know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it is. I think, I think what I do is so that, um, I don't do this very often, but I think with the categories, the P1 to P4, right? Uh, I have used that too. Yeah, I think the funniest thing was that I got to a bit of confusion because in my labels, besides having things like content creation and blah, 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 right? I also have labels like, oh, this is 15 to um, 5 to 15 minutes. This is half an hour. This is one hour, blah, blah, blah. So they also, when it comes to shopping them out, right? I'm a little confused. Do I put a task in only... Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. really good really good yeah so so really that's a sophisticated question because in todoist for example i use todoist i have the categories um like video ideas or service improvement like i said earlier but i also have labels for 15 minutes five minutes sorry i'm scrolling around too fast todoist allows projects and labels so if i have an idea that's service improvement i will put it in the service improvement folder no date but I will try to label it at five minutes, 15 minutes, or 30 minutes. So I have a quick sense if I'm like, okay, now it's time for me to do service improvement. I open up the folder, I sort by priority. I sort by priority and I say, well, I have 15 minutes left. So what are the 15 minute items in the top priority that I should do? Does that make sense? So it is yeah. important to sort, it's more important to sort by project or category. And then how long it takes, five, 15 minutes, 30 minutes is optional but it's helpful for further sorting from there. Okay. When you mentioned folder, you're referring to projects, is it? On Todoist? Yes. Uh, okay, project, okay, sure. In Todoist project, it's called projects. I call it category yeah. projects, same idea. Uh, okay, okay. That's very helpful. Thanks for that. Thanks, Faith.